Assalamualaikum and good evening. At the same time, good night to you all. I would like to give thanks to the organizer. At the same time, I would like to show my due respect to my professor and teacher, Professor Masood Begum, who is uh, working as professor of hematology in our department. At the same time, she is also working as Dean Faculty of Medicine. So I am delighted to be here in today's presentation. Learned online audience, I am welcome you to participate and enjoy on today's presentation overview of thalassemia. Thalassemia, one of the one of the big burden of our country. And first of all, I would like to say what is thalassemia. Thalassemia is a group of inherited clubin disorders which is characterized by reduced or absent synthesis of normal hemoglobin chains. So it is inherited hemoglobin disorder. These, uh, this is two types. One is thalassemia, another is hemoglobinopathies. And thalassemia related to reduced production of the polypeptide chain, alpha or beta globin chain. And hemoglobinopathies is one of the defect which is related to the structural defect of thalassemia. Minimum of thalassemia is it's a Greek word, thalassa, and, and uh, this hem, hema. First, it is recognized by Cody and Lee in 1925. So, what is the epidemiology of thalassemia? Before going to my presentation, we would like to know the incidence of thalassemia in our country at the same time wide perspective. In every year, all over the world, 50,000 thalassemic patients born severe thalassemia, and some of them beta thalassemia major, and some of them hemoglobin E beta, beta thalassemia. Both of them are mostly transmission department, transmission dependent. And the highest carrier frequency of beta thalassemia is reported in Maldives. It is about 18% and in Cyprus, 14%. And Southeast Asia, it is about 3 to 5 percent. This slide shows the distribution of thalassemia all over the world in a map. And we know that thalassemia, hemoglobin C, and sickle cell anemia is in the African country, incidence is more. And in Southeast Asia, hemoglobin E and beta thalassemia incidence is more. So what about the incidence of thalassemia in our country? We don't have any specific or accurate registration of thalassemia. According to World Health Organization, different papers showed different type of incidence, but from where I have collected the information, it is about 3% of the population in our country carrying beta thalassemia and 4% carriers hemoglobin E in Bangladesh. In another publication, 4.1% prevalence of the beta thalassemia trait and 6.1% prevalence for hemoglobin E trait. It is presumed that approximately 6,000 thalassemic children are born each year in Bangladesh. So we can easily imagine how many burden we have related to their thalassemia. This is another slide which shows distribution of the patient according to the division. In Russia division, thalassemia, uh, beta thalassemia minor and hemoglobin E distribution is about 5.5 to 16.5%. Uh, and the incidence of beta thalassemia uh, in Chitong, beta thalassemia trade 2.5 and 2.9 and 2.9. And these are the distribution. Uh, not only it is representing uh, a few districts, it's a sample of, or it's a just, uh, just a natural uh, incidence of thalassemia in our country. So we need large scale thalassemia registration in nationwide. So if we classify thalassemia, genotypic classification, that means. Uh, the thalassemia is developed due to genetic defect. 
is as because it is hereditary, we can classify it as alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. And alpha thalassemia, you know, the gene which is uh, related to the uh, development of uh, the alpha thalassemia, this is uh, chromosome 16 defect. And in case of beta thalassemia, the gene responsible gene is chromosome 11. Due to the defect of these genes, there is deficiency of the polypeptide chains, alpha polypeptide chain or beta polypeptide chain, inadequate production or absent of production of the polypeptide chains. So when thalassemia expressed as a, as a disease state, we can classify it as like beta thalassemia major, severe hemoglobin E beta thalassemia and hemoglobin birds. Thalassemia intermedia in between thalassemia major and minor, the clinical presentation in, in between and uh, transmission dependent and not uh, non uh, transmission uh, dependent thalassemia. These are beta thalassemia intermedia and milder and moderate forms of hemoglobin A beta thalassemia and hemoglobin A disease. Phenotypic classification also beta thalassemia trait, alpha thalassemia trait, alpha beta thalassemia trait, hemoglobin lipo. And when a patient is suffering from this type of thalassemia, their clinical pre presentation will be mild, milder, not so severe. Clinically, you can classify thalassemia as like transmission dependent thalassemia and non transmission dependent thalassemia. Non transmission dependent thalassemia is a group of thalassemia for patients does not require lifelong regular cell transmission for their survival. And sometimes they require uh, transmission uh, in occasional uh, uh, during growth failure, pregnancy infection, and specific situations. Thalassemia can be categorized also into different forms, beta thalassemia intermedia, hemoglobin E beta thalassemia, and hemoglobin H disease. Inheritance of thalassemia. Thalassemia is inherited as an autosomal recessive disorder. When, a, when parents are healthy, all the children born in a good health, all the children will be healthy. When one of a, of a family in between husband or wife, if wife is a carrier, then 50% will be healthy and 50% will be a thalassemia trait. When both uh, parents are carrier, 25% will be thalassemia, will develop thalassemia, and 50% and beta thalassemia trait, and 25% will be healthy. So we just would like to motivate the people of our country not to marry in between uh, a two thalassemia trait. Pathophysiology of thalassemia, this absence or decreased production of one or more globin chains. And in case of hemoglobin pathis, that is formation of abnormal hemoglobin structure. And due to this abnormality and genetic defect or mutation, blood cells are produced. And this, is a, this uh, blood cells formation is a type of ineffective erythropoiesis. Cells are not, uh, not uh, perform their normal activities. And excessive RBCs destruction occur due to defect, uh, lack of polypeptide chain production or inadequate production of polypeptide chain and structural defect of hemoglobin causes premature destruction of red blood cells. And the patient, those who are thalassemic, they develop anemia. And due to destruction and, uh, and blood transmission, the iron overload develops within their body. And to fulfill the requirement of the hemoglobin and oxygen carrying demand, extramedullary hematopoiesis may occur. Erythropoiesis may occur uh, other than uh, bone marrow from liver, spleen, and other sides. So all of you wanted to know what are the clinical presentations of thalassemia. Thalassemia whole shorir ki ki Features of thalassemia major, usually they present within two years of age so the, this this patient, thalassemia major patient, 
develop severe anemia. Some few patients develop anemia at days of six months, and within two years, they develop severe anemia. Failure to thrive sometimes, and pallor jaundice, and their spleen will be enlarged. And sometimes, and most of the time, bony expansion causing frontal bulging and malar pronis. So facial expression will be changed, and thalassemia faces will develop. How can we diagnose thalassemia patient? Very simply, if we do CBC and peripheral blood film, from CBC and peripheral blood film, we may found low hemoglobin level, MCV and MCAs. Peripheral blood film will represent microcytosis and hypochromia, sometimes anisocytosis, poikilocytosis. There are changes within the RBCs. And uh, these are the evidence of uh, thalassemia when we examine a blood film. Nucleated red blood cell, that is immature red blood cell, we may found in the peripheral blood. This is the picture of uh, peripheral uh, blood uh, from, uh, from a patient with thalassemia. How we can diagnose? We do peripheral blood film and CBC at the same time we have to do iron profile. And from the iron profile, especially serum ferritin will reveal the excessive accumulation of iron in different vital organs of the body. And non-invasive invasion we can do uh, MRI, that is very scan uh, of liver and heart that will help us to assess a patient regarding iron overload within the body. Hemoglobin, after doing CBC and peripheral blood film, if a patient is suspected as, a, as, a, as thalassemia, we will do hemoglobin electrophoresis for specific diagnosis. These are the findings which will help us to categorize the thalassemia, beta thalassemia, alpha thalassemia, beta thalassemia major, and beta thalassemia. These are the laboratory findings from Hemoglobin electrophoresis will get this type of findings and after proper interpretation with the hematologist or experts of expert laboratory personnel can interpret and categorize the thalassemic patient accordingly. So one of the important that is for the confirmation of thalassemia, we, we can do DNA analysis to take the cleavage gene mutation is of the specific test. And antenatal diagnosis this antenatal diagnosis will be done for uh, thalassemia prevention purpose. That's when a parent's father or mother having thalassemia gene or carrier uh, in between, marriage in between two carrier, there is a pre chance uh, to develop a baby uh, with thalassemia. So this type of, uh, this, this parent, this type of parents, if they want to know whether their child uh, be, is becoming thalassemic or not, we can suggest them uh, to do coronary pila sampling in between nine to 11 weeks of pregnancy. And the test, sometimes we can do amniosynthesis, photosynthesis at 16 to 18 weeks of pregnancy. This will help us if a baby develop or if a, a baby become thalassemic, then we may suggest them therapeutic abortion, it will help us for the prevention of thalassemia. At the same time, one of the latest uh, way to diagnose or to uh, prevent thalassemia, that is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. We can do, or we can suggest pre uh, in vitro fertilization. Then from the, uh, from the from few embryos, we can identify which embryo is thalassemia free. That embryo will be implanted uh, within the uterus of the mother. And uh, in this way, we can have our thalassemic couple uh, can have their baby with uh, no thalassemia and it will help us to prevent thalassemia. So what are the management of thalassemia? Simply, everybody knows that thalassemic patient needs blood transfusion. That is blood transfusion. If we found iron overload, we can treat the excessive iron from the body at the same time management of the complications. Our second speaker will brief it nicely what are the complications related to the, uh, to the endocrine 
endocrinology or endocrinopathy and splenectomy one of the app option and there is some criteria when we do splenectomy and hemopathy stem cell transplantation another updated management but it is expensive it is not easy it is not available for everyone what are the future plan for future treatment plans in gene therapy it is really a shame not effective yet now uh, in many of the countries uh, of the world so uh, we may think about but to do gene therapy is really uh, ongoing and we have to wait for a long time criteria for initiating transmission therapy when we will give transmission must have to decide the proper time of transmission we we'll do some investigation First of all, we have to confirm whether the patient is thalassemic or not. Then subsequently, we will do hemoglobin, CBC, and peripheral blood film. And uh, from the CBC, peripheral blood film, uh, we have to uh, think about whether the hemoglobin level is 7 gram per TL uh, on two occasions or more than two weeks apart, two shop or four. The contributory causes such as infection, we have to uh, treat infection. Uh, before uh, 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 giving uh, blood transfusion for a thalassemic patient. Criteria for initiating transfusion therapy, clinical criteria irrespective of hemoglobin level, significant symptoms of anemia if present, if there is poor growth or failure to try, try, and if there's complications from excessive intramedullary hematopoiesis, such as pathological fracture or facial changes, that means there is uh, Changes in the faces due to thalassemia, this mongolic faces. Clinically significant stramadoly hematopoiesis is uh, another uh, causation. Recommendation recommended for the treatment of transfusion dependent thalassemia is lifelong regular blood transfusion, usually administration every two to five weeks to maintain the pre transfusion hemoglobin level is 9.5 or 10.5 gram. Uh, for GL. So, a yeah, higher target pre transmission hemoglobin level of 11 to 12 gram per GL may be appropriate for patients with heart disease. So, if a thalassic patient have heart disease, we, might, we may have to think about transmission um, strategy a little bit different. Another important issue is iron relation. So, proper and methodical blood transmission after proper screening mm -hmm. and cross-messing, mm -hmm. when we will diagnose, we'll found iron overload. The criteria is when more than 1,000 nanogram per GL and, or patient has received 50 to 20 transfusion mm -hmm. and when hepatic iron concentration exceeds 3.2 milligram per gram triweight, it is uh, not commonly practiced in our country or all over the world. So one of the important non-invasive investigations that, that is uh, MRI of liver and heart, that is ferry scan. We have to develop ferry scan facilities in our premises. premises. That means at Bangamundi Shed Medical University or medical course in other places. The goal of the iron inclination is to reduce the iron store and subsequently maintain at low level of serum protein less than 1000 nanogram uh, per ml. But these are the common iron chelating agents. Another is oral form and IV form. Just for examine and is IV form and, and subcutaneous form and Deferiprone and deferatirox, uh, it's in uh, oral form. And recently, uh, there is shortage or there is uh, uh, specific no supply of desferoxamine in our country right now. So we have to make it available for the thalassic patient in our uh, in our country. So I am drawing attention uh, attention from our health authority and the respective person to make available for the thalassic patient in our country. Complications of iron overload. This is the common complications of iron overload. In one session, it is not possible to discuss all about the complications. Today, our next presenter will, uh, will uh, give a brief uh, discussion on uh, endocrinological complications. And 
And due to thalassemia and adrenal overload, fibrosis, cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma also may develop. This is one of the another option uh, of you know, for the thalassemic patient. When we do split to for the thalassemic patient, when gradually blood transfusion uh, receiving uh, amount will be gradually increased. That means 200 to 220 ml of red cells uh, uh, per kg per year. And due to hyperspinal spinning will uh, become more larger, that will cause a mechanical problem, sometimes one or uh, two cell uh, deficient. That is uh, uh, sometimes uh, bicytopenia, thrombocytopenia uh, may develop and symptomatic spinectomy. In this situation, we may think about uh, spinectomy. Before spinectomy, uh, uh, before two weeks, uh, of course, vaccination should have to be done to prevent the infection of uh, capsulated organism. At the same time, post spinectomy management, one of the important issues, thrombocytosis may develop, thromboembolism prevention and management should have to. Sometimes pulmonary hypertension may develop. We don't have specific pulmonary hypertension management facilities in our uh, country right now. So another important treatment modalities is hemopoietic you know, stem cell transplantation. And in our country, we are also trying Maybe one or two mm -hmm. cases already been done, uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, say allogenic stem cell transplantation. Young patient, less than 17 years old, or it is better to do seven to 10 years uh, within, uh, with a beta thalassemia, beta plus or beta zero genotype having an ACLA compatible sibling or 10 by 10 matched volunteer donor. It is very difficult to do bone marrow transplant bone marrow transplant for a thalassemia patient because nowadays in our country, every family, uh, has the has one or two child so so find to find out donor is very difficult for the thalassemic patient uh, if we would like to do uh, allogenic bone marrow transplantation so uh, haploidentical or mismatched or unrelated donor and or we can source donor from the donor registry so we need to develop uh, bone marrow transplantation donor registry in our country also so i would like to propose today's um, organizers uh, to uh, give a message to the authority or to uh, spread this message all over the country. We need to develop donor registry for bone marrow transplantation so that in crisis period, we can try to find out donors from the donor registry. Another important issue is uh, gene therapy. Uh, I don't want to go elaborate on gene therapy. Gene therapy within uh, it is uh, better to do in between 70 to 55 years. We, we are thinking about uh, theoretically about gene therapy, but it is not available or, or uh, it is not easily uh, approachable uh, for all the patients in the country. It is under clinical trial also. And other, other few drugs, which is novel and emerging therapies, uh, last but I said, a recombinant fusion protein that binds to a specific ligands of the transforming growth factor beta super family and enhances erythroid maturation is the most recently approved therapy for the management of transplantation dependent thalassemia. A recombinant starting dose is one milligram per kg once every three weeks by subcutaneous injection. Other drugs that is uh, fetal hemoglobin inducer, sometimes hydroxyurea and thalidomide, we are using for the thalassemic patient also. So what are the take home messages? What message we would like to spread or convey to the nation or the government or the stakeholders for the thalassemia? So we need national thalassemia registry. Our director general of health and health ministry, they, they have tried to develop, they are, they're trying um, already, they set up uh, thalassemia registry in the DG of fish and, uh, and uh, really all the stakeholders already prepared a guideline uh, for thalassemia machine in our country. But, but we have to make it effective and, and, and recently it is time and demanding uh, to make available the drugs for the thalassemia patient and to encourage and to take initiation to do nationwide thalassemia registry uh, through government, uh, through government, and creating awareness. There is no alternative to create awareness related to thalassemia, and population screening is also required. Genetic counseling um, in between the thalassemia patients and 
the uh, the uh, uh, and the children or adolescent or marriage is it uh, population which should have to do genetic counseling prevention of birth of new thalassemia baby uh, is one of the issues so thalassemia addressing thalassemia patient all over the country at the same time diagnosis of the patient screening of the patient and treatment of thalassemic babies and prevention and discourage to marry one thalassemia career with another thalassemia career. And when they develop uh, thalassemia or when they, uh, they uh, one thalassemia career married with another uh, thalassemia career. So we have to counsel them for prenatal diagnosis or pre implantation genetic diagnosis uh, to prevent thalassemia. So, uh, be or share and care. So we would like to prevent thalassemia and we would like to develop our nation thalassemia. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present 